signaling here with all my apparatus. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. It is wonderful to see you here today. And also, I welcome our friends who are watching on Facebook Live. We are all one body, so I am glad that we are here, either present and also via Facebook. Um, a few announcements before we begin our service here at Sherwood. First of all, if any of you would like to go, uh, Mason is one of our own, is in a play which will be at one o'clock at two o'clock, thank you, at Hereford, Hereford High School. Information is in the bulletin. I am going, so if anyone wants to go, I hope you will join me and enjoy a wonderful play called Frozen. Is it an adaptation of it, or is it? Yes. It's an adaptation of the Disney movie Frozen. So um, please join me. I hope you will. Also, thank you to the Alter Guild. They are really the mainstay that holds up this congregation because they make sure that everything is ready for me and for our seminarian and the entire worship team. If you'll notice, this is taking a cleaner shine, and thanks to the hard work and the elbow grease, we have some shining brass, and I want to thank the Ultra Guild for that, and for those, particularly Larry, Susan, Joyce, and Sandy for doing that. Uh, we are wrapping up Gene Goldsmith's memorial. If anyone would still like to make a donation towards that, please consider it, and the information is in the bulletin. And also, I will be on vacation beginning next week. My family and I will be away for a week, so for two Sundays. And we have the Reverend Joanne Tetral, who will be with us. She is no stranger to Sherwood. She has been here many times and actually served while uh, she was in training um, as a deacon. And so she hung out with us at Sherwood. And so I know you, she is looking forward to coming back, and um, I know you will welcome her. Karen, our seminarian, goes on vacation starting tomorrow and will not be here next Sunday either. So I hope we have a lot of good turnout for Joanne, um, who will be here. And then lastly, a thank you to Greg and for all of his interesting articles on these composers that you have been writing about and then showing us through your talent of music and your talent of voice, Cassidy. Um, it has been very interesting. I have learned a lot, and I really commend you to this last article. It was very good. Is this the last one? Uh, well, there will be uh, articles here and there. Uh, I think I better get back to focusing on my practicing. So we'll have more articles to come, but not necessarily immediately. <laughs> he needs a little rest. It's a lot of work. So, um, and I appreciate all the time and effort that you put into it because it's added to our music for this summer, which has been fabulous. Um, I commend the rest of you to look at the announcements. There's many things in there. Also, for those who are watching online, you can go to SherwoodCockeysville.org and under the worship link, there, are, uh, there is a link for bulletins. So you can download it right now and follow along in our service. So now let us sort of collect ourselves Take a deep breath, more for, so for me than probably all of you, and have a few moments of silence to open our hearts and our minds and our thoughts to the prayers, to the hymns, and to the words and prayers that we will be sending up here today. Thank you for being with us here and also in Facebook Live.
service begins on page one of our bulletin. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Let us pray. Let your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church. And because it can, cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. The first reading is from 2 Samuel. When the wife of Uriah heard that her husband was dead, she made lamentation for him. When the morning was over, David sent and brought her to his house, and she became his wife and bore him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord, and the Lord sent Nathan to David. He came to him and said to him, there were two men in a certain city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had very many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing but one little ewe lamb, which he had bought. He brought it up, and it grew up with him and with his children. It used to eat of his meager fare and drink from his cup and lie in his bosom, and it was like a daughter to him. Now there came a traveler to the rich man, and he was loath to take one of his own flock or herd to prepare for the wayfarer who had come to him. But he took the poor man's lamb and prepared that for the guest who had come to him. <clears throat> then David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. He said to Nathan, as the Lord lives, the man who has done this deserves to die. He shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. Nathan said to David, You are the man. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I anointed you king over Israel, and I rescued you from the hand of Saul. I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your bosom and gave you the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that had been too little, I would have added as much more. Why have you despised the word of the Lord to do what's evil in his sight? You have struck down Uriah the Hittite with the sword and have taken his wife to be your wife and have killed him with the sword of the Ammonites. Now therefore the sword shall never depart from your house, for you have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. 
Thus says the Lord, I will raise up trouble against you from within your own house, and I will take your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbor, and he shall lie with your wives in the sight of this very son, for you did it secretly. But I will do this thing before all Israel and before the son. David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 51, verses 1 through 13. We will read responsively by whole verse. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Because you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. And so you're justified when you speak, and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me, and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be poor. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness, that the body you've broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Ask me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. The next day, when the people who remained after the feeding of the 5,000 saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boat and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then he said to him, that, then they said to him, What must we do to perform the good works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of the Lord.
Almighty God, take my lips and speak through them. Take our minds and think through them. Take our hearts and set them on fire with love for you. Amen. Please be seated. Sometimes in life, your children will actually surprise you. And that was when my daughter did what she did a few years back, actually many years back, when I was writing a sermon. She came into the kitchen where I was working and she asked me what I was going to preach about. And I told her it was the gospel lesson about Jesus being the bread of life. And that I was, that was going to be my focus. So then Megan sat down at the kitchen table and she paused for a few moments and said, you know, I think some people believe that coming to church and taking communion is all there is to the bread of life. But it's more than that to me. The bread of life is an experience, an experience when you realize that something holy has happened and that you are closer to God because of it. Moments in your life that make you feel, feel spiritually full, not physically full, so happy and complete that you can't imagine anything better. And it is in these moments that, you get, that get you through difficult times. Communion is a reminder of that, of the true meaning of the bread of life. I stood there, actually sat there in silence for a moment, and smiled, and I thought to myself, not bad, not bad at all from someone who I always had to bribe, not with bread, but with donuts to get to church every Sunday. And so today, our gospel reading is a continuation of last week's story, and by mid-August, we will have read all of chapter six in John's gospel. Now, if you recall, last week, Jesus fed all those who followed him and his disciples into the wilderness, over 5,000 in number. Let me take you back to last week's reading, and I want you to imagine the scene with Jesus, who when he asked his disciples, where can they buy food to feed this huge crowd? and no one has a satisfactory answer. They want to send them away. None of the disciples believed it was possible to feed everyone. And also remember that the 5,000 only included men, and children and women were also a part of this group. So it was many more than 5,000 people. And the only food that they saw in front of them was from a child, a small boy who offered five loaves and two fishes, a meager meal even for a small family. But that didn't deter Jesus. Instead, he told his crowd to sit down. And he took the food, gave thanks, blessed and broke it, handing it out to everyone. And when he asked the masses to sit down on that grassy knoll, I want us to imagine that no doubt there was some laughter and banter back and forth, people trying to stake out their little piece of grass. You couldn't sit down with all those people without having interaction. I imagine children began to play with one another, people chatted back and forth, offering advice or even just a listening ear. Questions were asked and answers given. How far did you travel? What do you think about this guy named Jesus? Has anyone in your family been healed? Everyone received as much as they needed. And most importantly, they were told they were satisfied. Satisfied. Satisfied because they no longer were hungry or satisfied because they were not phys only physically fulfilled, but they were spiritually quenched. 
I believe the full stomach wasn't what satisfied them, but something deep within their soul was realized. Their hearts were suddenly filled, brimming over perhaps with a sense of love, a sense of community, a sense of camaraderie and satisfaction that is difficult to put into words. But you know it when you experience it. Last week's gospel told us that when Jesus saw that they were satisfied, that was when he knew it was time to gather up what was left over so that nothing would be lost. He knew that they were not only satisfied with a filling of their stomach, but also a fulfilling of their spirit. And so today we continue the story and, and Jesus and the disciples in the middle of the night go across the, the lake and the people wake up and realize that they are not there and they go around the lake chasing after them. And if you take the story and you bring it into present day, I imagine all of us would have done the same thing. We would have gotten up from our meal and followed him, really run behind him, shouting questions, trying to understand what we had just witnessed, how that miracle happened, and how our hearts were filled. We too may have pointed to Moses and the manna from heaven that was given to the Israelites as they fled from Egypt as an example of who offers the bread of life. But Jesus reminds them and us when he says, very truly, and whenever Jesus says very truly, it means listen up because he does not say it very often. And so he says, very truly, I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven. It is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. You see, Jesus was telling them, It isn't about you, or even Moses, or what you do need to do to achieve the bread of life. This is about God and God's doing. This is about God giving us the gift of eternal life by giving us his son, Jesus Christ. It is Jesus who is the bread of life. And believing and following him is all we have to do to receive God's gift of love. It's so simple, but we humans have a hard time digesting his message. God's bread of life, Jesus, endures for eternity, not a fleeting moment. It doesn't have a short shelf life, but an eternal shelf life, so that we can call upon Jesus as the bread of life to be with us at all times. We may walk away from Jesus, but Jesus always remains steadfast. The gift is in the fact that we don't have to do anything. We don't have to be anything, because it isn't about us. It's about God and merely receiving his gift of Jesus. You know, as humans, we are tempted to qualify or quantify our faith with a list of things, of accomplishments, in order to prove that we do have faith. Well, you know, I I do go to church, and I do give to the poor, and I do pray from time to time. These are all wonderful endeavors, but we miss the true essence of what Jesus was trying to tell those around him and us. And that is, we don't need to do anything in order to be fed. Instead, we need to believe in Jesus. Faith in Jesus is what will fulfill us. Start with a commitment to Jesus, our true bread, and the rest will follow. Keeping our sights on Jesus will guide us to a life like Jesus, to follow his word and example, to approach life from a vantage point of love for others that will set us on a heavenly course right here and right now. You know, I used to see this before the pandemic best illustrated when I volunteered at the Loaves and Fishes. It is a program that offers a warm meal to anyone who comes through the door every Saturday of the year. 
And from my interactions and conversations with those who came in from the harsh world revealed to me that they were not just coming for a hot meal that might have been their only hot meal that week, but they also showed up because they wanted to be experienced being loved by a community of people, a community that accepted them for who they were with all their scars and wounds, a community that always welcomed them back, recognized them, knew their name, and just simply loved them. They not only got fed in the physical sense, but more importantly, they got fed spiritually. Their hearts were filled. Their dignity was restored. They belonged to something bigger than themselves. My friends, that, that is the bread of life. That is Jesus working in and through us in ways that we can't even understand. And if we don't have faith in Jesus as the bread of life, we might walk away from that kind of volunteer experience thinking and feeling a lot of self-pride. I made those people feel welcome. I served them a good hot meal. I really did a very good thing. But it wasn't me or others who were volunteering, nor there was there something bigger, nor, no, there was something bigger working in the moment that dwarfed our simple good works. There was the presence of the holy, ready to feed not only the stomach, but the soul to those open to receive it, regardless of who they were and from where they came. As Dietrich Bonhoeffer once said, it is only because he came like us that we can become like him. And I might add, it is our faith in Jesus as our nourishment that breaks open our heart so we receive his love, moving us to share his love with others. My friends, there are no hoops that we must jump through to receive the gift of the bread of life. Whether they realized it or not, Megan, the 5,000 and plus, and those at Loaves and Fishes all experience the bread of life in their own way. And like them, we simply need to be open and to trust and to step out in faith not necessarily knowing where it may lead us, but believing, believing that we are being nourished and loved by Jesus, by the true bread of life. And the rest will just follow. Amen. Amen. And now let us stand together as we are able to recite the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. 
with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. prayers of the people. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. For our bishop and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. For this town of Cockeysville, for every city and community, and for all those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. For the good earth which God has given us and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord we especially pray for those impacted by COVID-19 as well as those on our parish prayer list. Sally, Debbie, Shannon, Jeff and Kim, Norma, Joyce, Christine, Kendall, Marge, Sarah, Joe, Gail, Steve W., Michelle, Joe G., Steve and Debbie, Janetta, Christina, Khalil, Samantha, Courtney, Debbie H., Danny, Sandy and Jack, Virginia, Jackie, Susie H., Linda P., Timothy, Bill H., Margaret S. and family, Jackie and Rick, Louis, David D., Caitlin, Alice, Shannon T., Marissa, J., Debbie R., Tom T., and Bill and his family. Let us pray to the Lord. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. For the blessings of this life, especially for those celebrating birthdays, including Charles R., Gail M., and Greg Cisek, as well as anniversaries, including Daniel and Elizabeth and Bernie and Greg, let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord that we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord in the communion of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all, all our life to Christ our God. Lord, hear the prayers of your people, and what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually, to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your 
Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. That we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. The glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sin through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. you. Let us greet one another in peace. And to our friends who are visiting (laughs) via the internet. Good to see everyone. One thing I did fail to mention, we made a slight change. Hospitality, the hospitality table will be in the church wing. So as you leave, take something, and we will gather outside, hopefully not in the rain, um, but we will eat outside with our masks off and not worry, but it's a little easier for everyone if you can just come in and take what you need and then go and take off your mask and have a little nibble. Um, So thank you, I think it is uh, Anne who is our hostess for hospitality today, so thank you. And now let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and a sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, you, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body that was given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks to them, he said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. We offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us in your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, the author of salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God.
the post-communion prayer is found on page 14 of your bulletin. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to which is good. Render no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honor everyone, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.
refreshed and renewed, we reaffirm our commitment to our mission as a congregation, saying together, God commands us to enthusiastically cast open our doors to embrace all, impacting lives through bold service, no exception. Our worship is over and now our service begins. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. <laughs>